This is the Made for Success podcast, and this is Chris Widener, speaker and author of over 15 books, including the New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestseller, The Angel Inside. The Made for Success podcast will help you turn your potential into performance, succeed in every area of your life, and achieve your dreams. And now, enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode of the Made for Success podcast show, where we talk success with authors, speakers, sports stars, and influencers. This is Brian Heathman, CEO of Made for Success Publishing and host of today's episode. This episode is uh, actually especially exciting as we have the rare privilege from hearing from author and speaker Scott Love, who's an expert at turning managers into leaders. Scott shows managers how to be the boss that nobody will leave. Scott's a successful entrepreneur, professional keynote speaker, and author of the new book, Why They Follow. Scott's a graduate of the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. And Scott, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brian. I'm great. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about your background and your areas of expertise. Sure. I went to the Naval Academy. And when I graduated from Annapolis, here you are, you're an officer in the Navy. And I go to a ship and every sailor hates two things. They hate officers and they hate the Navy. <laughs> so I learned how to lead with authentic leadership. You've got to earn their respect and their trust. Then on my shore duty tour, I was a leadership trainer. I was an organizational development consultant teaching Deming management methods. Oh, at yeah, its sure. Navy. yeah, the Navy had a big initiative called Total Quality Leadership. So I, when I was 24, I really cut my teeth on some progressive leadership and management concepts and then mm -hmm. got out into the real world business, started doing sales, and then 22 years ago, got into executive search, into headhunting. And so I'm a high stakes headhunter. I recruit partners for international law firms in Washington huh. and D.C., wow. uh, D.C. and also up in New York, uh, do law firm mergers. But along the way, Brian because I've had tens of thousands of conversations with professionals trying to recruit them, there are those that say, I don't care how good that opportunity is, I'm going to stay. And I always ask, why is that? And there is a pattern to why people will turn down better opportunities and stay with companies. Huh. And it's those companies that focus not just on retention, but on loyalty. Those are the ones that get people that will turn down better opportunities and stay with them forever. Uh, so I speak quite a bit at business conferences, executive retreats, association meetings on that topic, showing managers how to be the boss that nobody will leave. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Well, you know, when I was flipping through your book, Why They Follow, I noticed that you kind of write on a personal level. And I got the <laughs> sense that you must feel strongly about employee loyalty and leadership styles in the workplace. What can you tell me from your experience that kind of is, you know, your passion behind this topic? I think it's just a simple fix many times. And you know this, and Chris knows this, is that leadership, it's not a complex concept. It's pretty simple, but it takes a lifetime to learn. It's kind of like they say with the game of poker, it takes a few minutes to learn, but a lifetime to master. It's the same thing with leadership is that there's just a few key concepts that if a manager can understand those, uh, they will become the type of boss that people will follow. And more specific to your question is that the way I teach leadership in my book especially is find out why do people follow? Let's okay. find out what that intrinsic motivation really is and let's lead to that. And if you can do that, then you're going to be the kind of manager that is followable. Okay, got it. So if you talk about the things that kind of compel an employee to follow, you're probably looking at some sort of a response level. And I noticed that you talk about a sliding scale. So <laughs> what, uh, what do you mean by this whole sliding scale concept? Sure, sure, Brian, because every time an employee comes to work, they come to work for themselves, not for the boss. Yeah, you know, I hate to tell you that, guys <laughs> and, and ladies, yeah. ladies and gentlemen that are listening, they're managers. They're not coming to work for you. They're coming to work for themselves. And they choose. And, and I noticed, you know, even from an early age when I was in the Navy, all the way up to seeing how people work in the workforce, is that a manager gives a directive and that employee chooses, okay, what's the energy? What's the enthusiasm that I'm going to put into the, accomplishing this task? And you could say it's on a scale of one to 10. One meaning they're going to do the minimum, 10 meaning they're going to put their heart and their soul into this. And based on how that manager leads on a personal level, that increases that response ratio. So if you want your employees to give it a 10 every day, they're going to do that just because of the leadership qualities of their immediate boss. That's so true. And that relates to uh, big increases in productivity and bottom line results. So, Absolutely right. Yeah. So I've heard you speak 
about the uh, the first cardinal rule of human behavior, and uh, would love to kind of share some of those thoughts with our listeners today. Sure, I'd say in layman's terms. People are so darn selfish. At the end of the day, it's every man for himself. And I say it like this, that people are going to do what's in their own best interest. And here's an example. My son is 16. He is a professional model. He just turned 16 three months ago. He's represented by the Willamina Agency, and mm -hmm. he's done very well with that. And he's motivated. He will wake up at 4 a.m. to be on time for a 5 a.m. photo shoot. Wow. But I can't, I can't get him out of bed. You know, <laughs> if there's anything... If we're talking about school, because he's online school through an, you know, come on, get on, you know, no, he's not motivated to do that, but he's motivated. He is driven. He is passionate mm -hmm. about choosing his own personal goals. When he was a little guy, come on, get in the car seat. Come on, get in the car seat. When he was five years old, I could yell and scream and it's not going to work. So I learned, I'd say this, I'd say, Dagson, let's have a race. And he'd look at me and I'd say, let's, he's, what's the race, daddy? I said, let's see if you can run and get in your car seat before I get to my seat. Ready, set, go. Oh, look how fast you are. And so I think the manager needs to look at what is it that motivates each individual within their team and lead that way. Everybody's motivated by something. And for them, it's their own personal intrinsic motivation. And that's what managers really have to pay attention to is the differences of the people on their team, what's motivated by them. Some people are motivated by recognition. Other mm -hmm. people are motivated by completion. Other people are motivated to be just a good supporter, to be a really good number two or number three. And it's different for everybody. And I think the whole key is for the managers to take their eyes off of themselves and fixate it on how can we accomplish this mission by aligning the intrinsic motivations of my team. And that's what it's really all about. Let's take a 20 second break to thank our sponsor, Made for Success Publishing. For listeners of this show, visit madeforsuccess.com forward slash podcast and enjoy half off of the world's most popular personal development audiobooks. Use coupon code SUCCESS at checkout for a 50% savings. Now, back to the Made for Success podcast show. Huh, okay, that's interesting. And I think for, you know, managers also, you know, it's sort of key to know what your intrinsic motivation is so that you can equip leaders to better lead you as a manager. So that's kind of it. There's kind of an interesting two way street. No, you're absolutely uh, right. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. To what you're talking about. So it's funny listening to your story about your son. I've got a son who's uh, kind of went through a similar thing at the age 18. He moved mm -hmm. to Los Angeles to pursue an acting career. Oh, and wow. Very self motivated and all that. And then he took a job at, uh, you know, now he's in his early 20s, started, uh, started doing corporate life work. And his motivations are now really kind of on the shoulders of his immediate managers and these yeah. um, and trying to find the triggers to tap into that well of motivation is a challenge for every individual manager <laughs> and leader. I mean, that's a big time uh, challenge in the workplace. Absolutely right. So talking tactics, I mean, especially coming from a, a naval background, what kind of tactical exercises can a manager do to kind of build up their own personal leadership style? That's a great question. We have to remember that leadership is intensely personal. When people say, oh, it's nothing personal, it's just business. Well, that's not entirely true because there's always an emotional context of people coming to work. The emotions that follow them from the workplace going home, they go with them every night. The emotions from turmoil or drama at home, they come to work every single day. And when they observe a manager, like I mentioned before, they're making a choice to respond on a scale of one to 10 based on the personal leadership qualities of that boss. So I think that boss, and this is where the logic goes, you know, based on my tens of thousands of conversations as a headhunter, literally tens of thousands, why is it that you're not going to consider this opportunity? I love it here. Why is that? You know, and I got different answers, but they all talk about the relationship with that employee and the boss one level up. I'm not talking about CEO leadership. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about mid-level, junior level, senior level management on their direct reports. And it's that one-on-one -on -one relationship. And that's where I think the linchpin is within organizations when it comes to keeping people forever and keeping them engaged and getting their loyalty. You have to earn their loyalty. Mm -hmm. And so I think two things a manager can do is accept the fact that this is a personal formula and two things. First, write down your core values. Mm -hmm. Now, this is stuff that you and Chris and every motivational speaker has talked about. And we've all heard this, but you'd be surprised how many people just haven't taken the time to just get a sheet of paper 
and take a few minutes and ask yourself, if you had all the money in the world, all your relationships are perfect, you had all the time in the world, what's left over? What's truly important to you in terms of your personal core values? Okay. And take the time to write that down. And that becomes, that's the benchmark when you have to make a decision. Well, how does that line up with my values? One of the things I've learned in my life, I realized this, one of my values is convenience and time, huh. time with family. That's why I live, my office is in downtown DC and I, I live 13 minute metro right away. I'd rather live in the house in the country, but I'm going to be home for dinner. And so I think sometimes you'll be surprised when you really ask yourself, what's truly important to you? What are your personal core values. Don't think about work. Think about what's personally important to you. Then the second part is to draft your personal mission statement. Mm -hmm. What is it that you're here on this planet to accomplish? Why are you here? It might not have anything to do with business. Okay. And that gives you real clarity. And so two things happen. Number one, your confidence increases because you know exactly what motivates you and you know exactly where you're going. So your personal confidence increases. Number two, people are going to pick up on this. And nobody likes to be pushed. Nobody likes to be manipulated or nudged, but we are okay following someone. We are okay willingly following a leader that deserves to be followed. And we are attracted to people that have confidence. They know who they are. They're congruent. We can trust them, and they know exactly where they're going in life. And when a manager starts with those two things, that's the beginning of their journey of becoming a better leader. And I think other things, listening to the success podcast that you all have, looking at some of the other resources that I've seen on your website that you and Chris have, mm -hmm. those are solid resources. And I think when a manager starts investing time in personal development, and this is one of the things I've done, uh, Brian, I, I have a personal goal to invest one hour a day in personal development activities, Okay, whether that's on the treadmill whether it's reading or listening to an audio program or whatever. So this morning, I'm on the Metro ride. It took me about 30 minutes walking to the Metro and then walking to my office. I'm halfway there. You know, I'm turning my non-productive time into money-making time. When you're on the treadmill of the elliptical for 30 minutes, well, that's 30 minutes of personal development time. Well, if you listen to an audio program, if I listen to your podcast while I'm on the elliptical, I've got an hour of development time in just 30 minutes worth of time. I'm done for the day. Right. And if you just have that deliberate intention about growing and expanding in terms of your mind, in terms of your impersonal resources, that's attractive to people. It builds up your knowledge base. It builds up your wisdom. And people will pick up on this and they will follow you. They will choose to follow closer to a 10 on that personal response ratio just because of how you have developed yourself as a leader. You know, it's kind of funny when you talk about this. I think of an example within my own company. In fact, we had a offsite we went down to a uh, town called Ocean Shores, rented a small cabin, and uh, brought in a leadership expert, much like yourself, to kind of help facilitate a, uh, a session with our company. And one of our employees, as we're going through this and we're trying to think about our core values and our mission, you know, her ultimate vision for her future was to go and hold babies in Africa wow. by the time we got down to the end of this. And so wow. now myself, as a leader, I know this, and I know that there, you know, her goals far extend the project management work that she does on our behalf, and it gets into something that's much bigger. So it's it's created a kind of a, a whole new relationship, whole new vision for what we can do to help enable that vision, and it's powerful from a leadership standpoint. So I hear exactly wow. what you're saying. That's great. That's yeah. great. So, Scott, I imagine that uh, folks will be quite eager to find out how they can get in touch with you, either for a keynote speech or to uh, pick up your book. How do people reach you? If you go to my website, it's scottlove.com, S-C-O-T-T-L-O-V-E.com. I've got all of my contact info there. And you know, people that want to book you guys to speak at conferences, they want to see what you've done. I've got a demo video online also, as well as testimonials. And I've spoken to different industries at different levels. So all the info's there. Uh, there's a link to Amazon for my book, that, or you can just go to Amazon. It's Why They Follow is the name of it, How okay. to Lead with Positive Influence. All right. All right. Very good. Hey, Scott, thanks so much for being on the Made for Success podcast show. We really appreciate your expertise and leadership. And uh, folks, we thanks for Thank you for uh, downloading this uh, this episode. We encourage you to come back often and uh, look for other exciting interviews. If you like this interview, hey, just go to iTunes, leave a review. Scott will be reading all of the reviews from this, and he would love to hear from you. So thanks again for listening.
Thanks for listening to the Made for Success podcast. Get to know us at madeforsuccess.com forward slash podcast. Meet the hosts of the Made for Success podcast and pick up a free copy of the Totally Motivated ebook by Chris Widener. We will see you next time on the Made for Success podcast.